Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I am here at the Ordev conference in Malmö, Sweden and uh, continuing to pair with Kim Grossman. I really appreciate you, you coming out and doing more pairing with me. Well, it's great to be here actually. I've... So when we, when we left off, we were just looking at um, how to s programmatically select a row and during the break between the last video and this one we looked at the documentation and, and found something that we thought worked. Um, set row selection interval is, is what we thought, mm -hmm. right? So I'd like to just pick up, just continue right where we left yeah. off and continue with that. Um, so I think this does it, and you know what I'd like to do actually? I think to, to confirm that this code does what we think it does, I'd like to put this in on our main yeah, application. I was just thinking that as well. I think that. Okay, great. It will be scary otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of blind UI testing. This. Yeah. So, uh, da -da. I guess we can do that mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. And I'm going to comment that out and see what we see okay. when we don't select. And so if it works, we should see something yes. like this happening, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So uh, close that down. Yeah. Okay. It looks like it's working. That's good. Um, and let me try doing 3, 5 just for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's working no, perfectly. That's fine. Um, Okay, so so how do we want to test this? I'm not sure what no styles at all means, actually. What do you mean? Uh, if you go back to the test, so it's right here. Mm -hmm. um, should not style rows that are selected. Yeah, I was just thinking about that too. I mean, it's not that we don't want it to style. I think the default behavior if we weren't to use, so let me just go back to the application. If we were to use a regular table rather than our forecast table, and this is really cool, the way Swing allows us to do this, by the way, hmm. I think. Um, so I've just switched back to the default, and it uses this sort of dark blue highlight. Yeah. Um, we could just use that default, which would be okay, but I think it would be better if we actually tested, like, defined our own color and tested for the presence of that color. Yeah. I, I guess either. Uh, were you thinking of something else? No, not at all. I'm just... I wonder if we can actually get to the, to the default um, settings somehow at all. Can, um, we, can we sort of ask the table what its default selection color is and things like that? We probably could. Okay. Um, would you rather do that? Mm, not really. I'm not sure though, because I, I think blue on blue on the pale blue would look funny. I think. Yeah. So I think we should choose our own yeah. color. I mean, yeah, we're I defining this table. Yeah. So let's let's do our own, um, and that has the pleasant side effect of being easier to test. And I'm happy to <laughs> cheat. So, or at least we know how to test it. So, um, so we set the interval interval, and so let's see. What we should say here is that. Selected rows should use custom, should use selection background. Okay. Well, let's get color. Yes. Uh, or maybe let's to, to put it in the same style as these other names. Mm -hmm. Table rows should use selection background color when, when row is selected. Or when selected. That's yeah, nice. yeah, I agree. Cool. Okay, so now it's just a matter of saying selection background color. Um, and I'm going to comment this out just to make sure. Um, and I can create this, and your very favorite color, have a bright red. 
<laughs> to start with. Um, the color of failure. <laughs> what, you, you don't like my color styles? Uh, what's what's the, the matter with them? I don't understand. The, oh, it needs to be a color as well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, row zero should have standard background expected that but was White. Okay, I think that that it says standard background, but that's just an error. Oh yeah. Should have selection background. Um, I wonder if you can actually get the cell background though. Is uh, I think I think there's a separate. Now yeah, we'll see. Um, well, I am getting the cell background. I don't understand what you're what you're saying actually. Um, I'm not sure the cell background. I think the cell background will stay. Oh, be and then that there's a separate selection background. I think I saw that earlier. Hmm. But we'll 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 see what happens. Yeah, we'll try yeah. this and see where it goes. Okay, so this should still fail. It should say row zero should have selection background uh, expected red, but was white. Mm -hmm. um, so now I think we can go in here and basically use this code here. If the cell is selected, uh, return. Uh, then we'll set the background to a different color. Yeah. So if um, what was that code? If is cell selected. Oh, okay. That reads pretty clean, I think. Yeah. All right. You think that'll work? Yeah, we'll see. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> no, that's, I'm that's, not convinced. I, I got five burner right here that says it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. You're, you're uh, wise not to take the bet. No, but try, um, try and run the app and see what happens. I think okay. you'll, you'll be disappointed. Okay, sure. okay. I, I, I will. Well, first, I have to change this back oh, to an alternate yeah. or uh, to a forecast yes. table. You think I'll be disappointed? Well, I will take that bet, um, but I don't understand why. No? Okay, no, that looks really good. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, for some, for some well, value, well, yeah. it's, really good. <laughs> it's working, is, is what I think you're trying to say. Uh, I think that's a better term. Yeah. Uh, huh. I, thought, so, I actually thought, thought the, sort of the selection coloring was different from the actual cell background. Yeah, I think the way, I think what's happening here. So I mean, maybe I don't. Maybe we're cheating, but it looks good. So. I don't think we're cheating. I actually think this is correct. Although I'm not a swing expert, and we'll probably have people commenting to let me know how <laughs> wrong, so. how, how very wrong I am. <laughs> uh, but I think the reason this is working is because prepare renderer is called for everything that's done oh, in the yeah. cell. Yeah. Uh, and actually, if you look at, there's other ways of creating a table cell renderer. And um, that code is asking for all kinds of stuff, like is it selected, is it editing. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, the renderer, in fact, will tell you that kind of stuff. You can say renderer dot, um, see right here, get table cell renderer. Is it selected, Has it, does oh, it have yeah. focus, you know, yada, yada, yada. Hmm. And then there's another one for, for editable cells. Yeah. Oh, okay, so the actual setting the selection color will actually... Yeah. Poke, poke at the renderer to, yeah, to actually think, do that. Okay. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but it, it's working. So yeah. um, I think we can call this one done once we fix that beautiful, beautiful red I color. I think there's a problem with the color there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It's, it's working exactly as intended. So do you have a suggestion? Um, let's see. Slightly darker blue. Is that uh, is sort of a darker blue. Okay, I'm going to... I want to fiddle with this a little bit, but I'm going to not do that on video, so I'm going to pause the video for a moment. We can play with the colors and make it beautiful, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Um, so we, we spent a little bit of time to play with the colors, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, this laptop screen doesn't have great color reproduction, so when I get onto a proper monitor, it may not look as good as it does to us now. <laughs> but um, I think that's pretty nice, and certainly better than the red background that we had. <laughs> I agree. Uh, we also made the alternating color background a little more vivid, which uh, I think is nice. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's really good. I think we're pretty much done with um, 
with this forecast table for now. Do you, uh, do you agree with that? Is yeah. there anything else that no. you can think of? Not really. I, I'm trying to think whether there are any edge cases with regards to selection, but I don't think so. Um, yeah, I mean, we should probably just do a little exploratory testing and play with it a little yeah. bit. Uh, double clicking doesn't seem to do anything. Clicking these doesn't do anything. We can select everything. Um, there's the select all keystroke. Well, um, can you uh, reorder the columns? Is that something we want to disable or need to disable? Uh, we can reorder the columns. That's, um, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. It's. I think it's kind of useless, uh, but you know, might be yeah, handy. Yeah, why not? I don't think it's something that we need to disable, but I also don't think it's something we need to support. No. You know, we don't need to save that information or anything. That's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> um, well, I didn't even think of that. Uh, resizing. Beautiful. Seems to work well. Mm -hmm. um, when I did the spike, the very first time I did the swing spike and was comparing to SWT, one of the things I looked at is I actually made these columns proportional to the size of the header. Oh. But I don't think that's actually something we need to do here. No. I mean, the actual values are the same everywhere. So um, Swing's built-in resizing behavior is actually really nice. No, it seems to work really well. Yeah, I, I think we're... I think this is good, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, maybe we should stop here. It's been almost the end of our, we're a little bit early, but um, we could just stop here and end on a high note. <laughs> yeah, um, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's stop here. Thank you very much, uh, Kim Grossman, for being my guest and uh, pairing with me for these last several episodes. Um, uh, really appreciate it. We're here at the Ordev conference in Malmo, Sweden. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. Again, my pleasure. All right. And thanks to all of you watching for, uh, for joining us. Uh, that's it for today's session, and I uh, hope to see you next time.